Elon Musk's Starship conducted its first trip and was ready for space travel but now SpaceX is ready to launch the Starship 24 with Booster 7. Well we finally witnessed the Starship landing. On the moon and are all the tests complete for the launch of this Starship. First full stack after six months SpaceX has stacked two stages of its next-generation Starship rocket for the first time in more than six months resulting in the biggest and most powerful launch vehicle ever. Fully constructed in our time SpaceX is prepared to launch the Starship 24 and Rocket 7 which have been undergoing repair into orbit and will most likely land on the moon the video. Today we'll show you how SpaceX is preparing for the first mission trip. Elon Musk must fulfill NASA's agreement by deploying people on the lunar surface this is why they're preparing the Starship for flight when Ship 24 and Booster 7 are piled on top of each other they look magnificent that is Ship 24 will be stacked on top of Booster 7 and Booster 7 will be beneath Ship 24. SpaceX is now refilling the launcher and preparing for the first time that the spaceship will fly into orbit we are confident that the flight will be a success. But before SpaceX is sure of launching the Starship 24 into orbit there are many tests that need to be performed the cryogenic tests Starship 24 conducted a number of cryogenic proving tests before its debut test of the Super Heavy more crucially Ship 24. Passed a number of static fire tests. Each of these had passed several cryogenic proof tests and functioned as a wet dress rehearsal for the liquid methane and liquid oxygen propellant Booster 7. In that regard it's unlikely that SpaceX was concerned about either prototype's ability to complete another test beyond the fundamental mechanical proof that the extremely heavy rocket is powerful enough to sustain a parley-loaded starship which was almost certainly not in dispute. SpaceX's orbital test flight pair is still in the works if something bad happens and both fails the very same models will be fixed and returned to the launch platform for a relaunch ship 24. Conducted a six-engine static fire test while Booster 7 accomplished a 33-engine spin primal milestone as the launch date approaches workers prepare multiple starships for future launches the Starship Florida. Launch location is nearly finished with considerable construction following the installation of Booster 7 on the orbital. Launch platform the stage was readied for a dual test campaign with its companion ship 24 Booster 7. Started with two three-engine spin primes the 33 engines test the 33 engine spin prime test for Booster 7 was a much anticipated test a few seconds into the test on July 11th. After they had attempted it the fuel-air combination detonated a few items needed to be fixed and the engine cooling system had been altered the methane used to lower the temperature of the Raptor engine is now collected and dumped in a pit away. From the ohm by the new engine cooling system this method all by not very elegant has so far been successful in preventing the fuel-air mixture issue that led to the blast during the 33-engine spin prime test. Also unknown if this mechanism will remain in place until launch but it provides wide SpaceX with the security it needs to complete at least a portion of the pre-launch testing. A 33-engine spin prime test was conducted on September 12th and it appeared to be an excellent replica of the test conducted on September 8th. Before beginning more difficult testing SpaceX crews frequently do a number of these full-engine spin primes this is. Because the information provided by these tests may be used to choose the best course of action the Cameron County. However the business is prepared for an extremely hectic launch schedule teams are currently preparing boost rate. For testing within 30 days ideally they would like to launch the second orbital mission. The upcoming cryogenic proof test the vehicle also has a routine examination and other system systems are being examined the essential components will be added to the vehicle over the next weeks in order to prepare it for cryogenic proof testing ship 25. Will likely begin testing at the launch site shortly if SpaceX plans to fly booster 8 and ship 25 immediately after the maiden orbital mission even though the majority of these tests are successful. Some are intentionally unsuccessful in order to evaluate various test causes and failure mechanisms and continue developing Raptor 2 models with more power. But there is one question that arises are all of these advances enough? For humanity to reach Mars reaching Mars CEO and creator of SpaceX is striving to get his Starship spaceship to Mars. Because he wants to build a city there in his initial comments about this made in December 2020 he estimated that is 
goal would be reached between 2024 and 2026. Musk and SpaceX have faced a number of challenges such as the lawsuit Jeff Bezos Blue Origin AU.S aerospace transportation firm brought against NASA. The multi-million dollar contract NASA gave SpaceX to create Starship is the basis for this case Musk really hasn't lost any of the project's primary goal in spite of some of the challenges. SpaceX has encountered and the landing of humans on Mars has only been delayed by three years. Musk said on Twitter that the new target date for the first human landing on Mars will be 2029 or precisely 60 years after the first lunar landing in 1969. Although Starship has not yet entered space it has previously completed a number of successful high-altitude flights the spaceship is intended to ferry humans to the lunar surface for NASA and ultimately to Mars. In just two decades SpaceX went from Elon Musk's dream of a greenhouse experiment on Mars to conducting the majority of U.S. rocket launches. But that's not enough for Musk's ambitions in space at nearly 400 feet with the name Starship the new SpaceX rocket will eventually be taller than the Saturn V that carried NASA's Apollo missions to the moon and its 33 engines. Will deliver twice the thrust for Elon Musk it's meant to play a key role in one day establishing a human colony on Mars. Starship's first orbital flight. What it comes will definitely reverberate through the space industry. SpaceX has spent over a year preparing for this, but there are some problems preventing Starship from launching into space, including the heat shield tiles falling off when the 33 Raptor 2 engines are fired, the launch stand blowing into pieces at the blast of the 33 E Raptors, and the booster fuel pipe leakage. But luckily Elon Musk has a viable solution to solve all these problems and get all 33 Raptor 2s to blast off without any flaw whether or not you're taking him in his word it's certainly worth exploring his engineering masterpiece. Technological innovations Elon Musk is very seriously considering using the Starship's launch tower to catch Super Heavy before landing on the ground and it's time to talk about Mechazilla the giant robotic launch and landing tower that will be literally catching Starship rockets out of the air with chopstick arms and sometime in the not-so-distant future it's an unprecedented and fantastical idea. From Elon and the SpaceX engineers but it's not about showing off this is a purely functional decision for the company indeed the Mechazilla launch tower is one of the most ambitious features of a space flight project. How tall is this? Again at this point 143 meters at the top. When we consider the mission of the tower Elon shared this for the first time December 30, 2020 through Twitter replies of course when someone asks if the super heavy would descend the land. The same way as Falcon 9 Elon replied we're gonna try to catch the super heavy booster with the launch tower arm using. The grid fins to take the load many assume that maybe the booster would be too tall and heavy for legs. But Elon clarified legs would certainly work but best part is no part best step is no step basically saying they could do it. The easy way but he's choosing. The hard way on purpose with good reason Elon also wrote saves mass and cost of legs and enables immediate repositioning of booster onto launch mount ready to refly in under an hour so if the super heavy were to come down onto the landing pad. The same way the first Starship tested then it's actually going to take a lot of work to get it back on the launch mount even if it's not far away first they'd need both a mobile crane and a giant tank a tank tread transport vehicle they use at Starbase for moving rockets. In addition to being heavy expensive complex landing legs themselves can be fragile and maintenance intensive okay. So we have a pretty good idea why he's doing it. But now we need to try and figure out how it's going to work and that's pretty fun on January 20th Musk had published the first official visualization of what SpaceX's plans to catch Super Heavy Booster might look like in real life. Based on the simulated telemetry shown in the visualization Super Heavy's descent to the landing zone appears to be considerably gentler than the suicide burned. SpaceX routinely uses on Falcon by decelerating as quickly as possible and making landing burns as short as possible Falcon saves a considerable amount of propellant during recovery. Extra propellant that if otherwise required would effectively increase Falcon's dry mass and decrease its payload to orbit in the super heavy catch must share the booster actually appears to be landing. Just on an incredibly small patch of steel on the tower's Mechazilla arms instead of a concrete pad on the ground aside from a tiny bit of lateral motion the arms appear motionless during the catch making it more of a landing. Further Super Heavy is shown decelerating rather slowly through the simulation and appears to hover for almost 10 seconds near the end. 
The challenge is a bit like if SpaceX for some reason made Falcon boosters land on two elevated ledges about as wide as car tires that slow cautious descent even slower touchdown may be necessary. Because of how incredibly accurate Super Heavy has to be to land on a pair of hard points with inches of lateral margin of error and maybe a few square feet of usable surface area aside from demanding accurate rotational control. Even the slightest lateral deviation would cause the booster to topple off the pillars and in the case of Super Heavy fall about a hundred feet onto the concrete where it would obviously explode in the event of a larger anomaly during a landing attempt. Starship or Super Heavy could accidentally impact the launch tower damaging or even outright destroying the skyscraper-sized structure ultimately. The immense risk posed by any catch attempt means that unless SpaceX has miraculously gotten the design of everything involved nearly perfect on its first try, the company will have to be extraordinarily cautious and expend a large number of ships and boosters to avoid rendering its only Starship launch tower unusable at least to some extent. SpaceX likely knows this and Super Heavy would likely need to be in excellent health and perform perfectly during the ascent and boost back portion of the launch debut to be cleared for a catch attempt. The probability is uncertain but the it is above zero and if the tower can catch the rocket and move it back into position onto the launch pad that could help. SpaceX reuse rockets faster than ever the fastest turnaround time for a Falcon 9 booster from previous flight to Reflight 21 days 6 hours in March 2020. Elon Musk said he wants Starship to be able to fly three times a day if he wants to build a city on Mars by 2050 he might come to depend on that rapid. SpaceX would need to make 10,000 flights over the next 30 years or around 333 per year which is pretty damn trippy. The whole launch system which is basically stage zero is um. I'd say as complex and difficult as either the booster or the ship this is and it's it's a very difficult thing that requires a lot of hardcore engineering. The tower and the launch system which I call stage zero is just as important as stage one and stage two stage zero will be a sustainable connection for SpaceX to make future flights beyond Earth it includes the tower launch. Mount flame diverter propellant tanks and all other ground systems basically everything in the launch site that doesn't fly. However unlike Starship rockets we can't iterate quickly enough on the launch tower it is complex requiring millions of dollars extensive hours or more like years of time and energy and a huge team of people to bring it into existence. That's why Musk said to be totally frank if it takes off without blowing off the stand stage zero which is much harder to replace than the booster that will be a victory. SpaceX has been upgrading and repairing the complex system over the past few months it should then be mentioned that SpaceX had to repair the launch pad in order to be ready for its next round of tests one notable. Repair involved replacing concrete directly under the ohm the concrete was damaged during the test you can see small chunks of concrete raining down around the launch site. SpaceX teams then proceeded to demolish the old concrete in preparation for the new pour a few days later a temporary tent that in the past was used to support the work of pouring the new pad has also been seen setting up near the ohm after the old concrete had been removed at that time SpaceX also quickly installed the shielding of one of the ohm legs which houses a multitude of pipes and wires running up into the mount itself one once the necessary repairs were completed. Maintenance and as expected there is a lot of work on and underneath the ohm afterward cranes lifts concrete pumping. All is being rushed to get ready for the 33 engine static fire as well as the Starship's first orbital flight the Ulm itself is also continuing to receive more shielding around the propellant transfer lines that run up one of the legs and cladding continues to be added. Near the base of the launch tower. The first orbital flight test and now that work is highly likely done as the scaffolding is starting to come down and almost all of the heat shield tiles have been reinstalled at the same time Ship 24's partner Super Heavy Booster 7 is. Receiving its final touches in the mega bay following the 11 engine static fire. SpaceX has only returned Booster 7 to the factory to repair damage or install missing hardware without official information. It's impossible to say why Booster 7 returned for the sixth time. The most optimistic explanation is that SpaceX brought the super heavy booster back to the factory to fully close out its. Engine section heat shield which currently has 20 missing panels for each of its outer Raptor engines but there's a good reason that those panels 
SpaceX would need to reinstall those panels now for Booster 7's upcoming 33-engine static fire or fires and full-stack wet dress rehearsals when they were needed for 11 and 14-engine static fires and a dozen. Before SpaceX returns the rocket to the launch pad given that the full wet dress rehearsals and one or several 33-engine Stack fires standing between Booster 7 and flight readiness will be riskier and more challenging than any other test. Target for Starship's orbital launch debut more specific than the first half of 2023, but with any luck even if it requires a substantially longer wait. SpaceX's recent decision to make Starbase move slower and break fewer things will hopefully pay off with a successful debut sometime next year. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.